I've heard a lot of people talk about the Enneagram as a tool for self-awareness. Is the Enneagram mm -hmm. something you use with people during therapy? And if so, how? Yeah, good question. There's a uh, short answer and a long answer. The short answer is uh, typically clinicians don't use the Enneagram as a um, diagnostic or assessment tool. And so that's not something that uh, most professional counselors will like administer to folks in order to uh, gain clinical information that's useful in assessing whatever the struggle or difficulty that a person is um, facing. And so it's not really a clinical tool most clinicians use. Uh, we don't use it as practice. I don't use it personally with uh, clients. And that doesn't mean that it's not valuable and useful from a uh, self understanding and exploration standpoint that a lot of people find a lot of value in being able to uh, engage that assessment and find that the information that it provides about them really is, is validating in a lot of ways, you know, that we can uh, oftentimes experience ourselves as being uh, terminally unique or that we're, we're weird, that we're uh, the way that we process life is maybe different than our family members or our partner or those that are with us and can feel like maybe we're alone in that. And by being able to see ourself in a vignette that uh, millions of people identify with, we realize, oh, this is, this is pretty normal, that it's different than this person and maybe different than a lot of other folks in my life. But that doesn't mean that it's not a valid way of being, that this cluster of strengths and weaknesses that are part of my personality are one of many common human experiences. And I can use that information to be able to be accepting of myself, as well as to have insight into the shadow areas of my personality. Those things where, uh, you know, if I'm honest with myself, I see that I do get in to trouble with or that do cause me difficulty in relationship and that are worth uh, giving attention to in order to mature in and to guard against the shadow side of um, my strengths. Yeah, you know, something that I have really liked about the Enneagram personally as I've studied it and learned about more about myself has been just kind of the, the growth pattern that you can kind of have in, in the Enneagram that you can, you know, know your type, know what it looks like to be unhealthy in that Enneagram type and what it looks like to be healthy and kind of be able to grow into that. And um, I've really liked that almost in like a sanctifying way of being like, you know, like this, this is kind of who I was created to be and, and what God created me with. And I'm going to grow into that. Um, so almost being you know, recognizing the sanctification and recognizing where I need to be sanctified and where I need to grow um, has been really helpful for me. So definitely, yeah. I'm super yeah, a, If you know your Enneagram type. I don't actually, I've not taken it. Oh my I God. I know, right? <laughs> In fact, maybe I should do that. Maybe we should do that as part of uh, live. Yes. Part. <laughs> maybe do it and record myself doing it. We'll keep and, everybody uh, posted on Doc and Instagram type. <laughs> that sounds like a thing that we should do. Could be fun. The the I like the the way you highlight its uh, utility for uh, just uh, being reflective and contemplative in our own faith. That uh, rather it be the Enneagram or other resources that are, have been a part of a Christian spirituality through the centuries that serve as reflective tools. In times where we are uh, looking to a mirror and, and have an honest look at our strengths and our weaknesses, that that's a part of maturation. That's a part of uh, spiritual development. It's a part of maturity as a human being, a willingness to look in the mirror and be uh, accept what it is we see in the strengths and the weaknesses and the good and the bad and to be 
willing to use that information than to engage a growth and development process. That that function is a part of every mature human being's life. Those that don't live an intentional life, that aren't reflective, that don't look into the mirror, and or they paint a, a self-portrait and watercolor and hang it on the wall and call it a mirror, you know, that they are looking at a picture of themselves that they've painted and the way they want to think of themselves and the way that they want to um, see things as opposed to honestly looking at a reflection of who they are and where they're at. Those are those are the difference between the mature and immature, the wise and foolish. And so whether it's Enneagram or other kind of reflective, contemplative exercises, uh, that's a valuable tool for the believer and for every human. Mm -hmm.